Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan as well as the author of Beginner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements and Financial Ratios. Uh, for this video, what I'd like to do is to provide y'all with some more insights into Apple 2021 financial analysis. Specifically, I'm going to drill down on the cost of goods sold and the Apple's current ratio for the last five years. So the way the video is going to play out is I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me, not too much, just touch on it real quick. And then from there, let's go ahead and analyze Apple's cost of goods sold for the last five years, as well as their current ratio. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. All right, as promised, a little as promised, a little bit about me. I am a financial modeler. I'm a business plan writer, as well as I do write company reports, as well as beginner guides for to, uh, about 15 to 20 different public companies um, for, in the U.S. Uh, so I have a little bit of experience analyzing financial statements and financial ratios. Also, I am the author of the Beginner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements and Financial Ratios, which is on Amazon. And then finally, I am an adjunct professor and subject matter expert for business and finance. So I've got some education behind me as well. All right, with that said, foundation set, let's move on. All right, so when I am analyzing cost of goods sold, or when I analyzed the cost of goods sold for Apple, when I wrote its company report, which is on my website, um, first thing what I did is I took a look at the cost of goods sold and I took a look at the average. So on average for the last five years, the organization's cost of goods sold has been growing at about 11.3% pace. So that in this information in and of itself really doesn't tell us a whole lot. However, when we compare that growth rate to the revenue growth rate, which is at 13.1%, this shows us that the organization's growth rate is higher as compared to its cost of goods, which means that it seems like the company is able to increase or they are increasing their prices and their costs of goods are not increasing as fast, which means that their gross profit margins are increasing, which is a good thing for the organization. Um, the next thing that I would take a look at would be the cost of goods as compared to revenues. So in 2017, we're looking at about 61.5%. In the next two years, the organization's cost of goods as compared to revenues would con would continually increase. Not too much, but it, it's enough to slice into the company's gross profit margin, which also means that the company, either A, their cost of goods is going up and they're not passing it on to their um they're not passing it on to their customers through higher prices, or the cost of goods are staying the same and the organization's uh, sales prices are coming down. So in this three year time span, their gross profit margin shrinking. And so that, that's a little bit of a concern. However, in the last two years, the organization's gross profit margin or their cost of goods as compared to revenues would continually fall for, for the next two years, which is a great trend. That means that their gross profit margin is increasing. And if that is the case, then they're going to have more funds available for operations and in the end profits as well. Now, of course, not everything is all hunky dory and peaches and cream over at Apple. Um, so one, one of the things that um, kind of caught my eye was a little bit of a concern is that in 2018, their growth rate increased at a faster pace as compared to their cost of goods sold. So which, what that means is their, their, their raw material costs increased, but they weren't able to pass on that increase to their consumers. It could have been because of the competitive environment um, or you know the, the company wanted to move more products and they dropped their prices. Whatever the reason, that was a little bit of a concern, but that did happen you know three to four years ago. So um, not too bad. All right, next is going to be Apple's financial ratio, specifically in this video, their current ratio. So the current ratio for an organization, um, all that means is that you're going to take your current assets here and you're going to divide it by the current liabilities. And here's Apple's current ratio for the last five years. And what that means is we want to see a number above 1.0. If the organization has more current assets as compared to current liabilities, then that tells us that for the short term, they're going to be solvent or they, they should have enough money to cover their current liabilities. Now, with that said, with organizations that continually get cash flow on a daily basis, such as a Walmart, uh, such as a 
um, such as your retail stores, such as your theme parks, those organizations that continually get an influx of cash on a continuous basis, they tend to run at a lower current ratio, uh, sometimes 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So with, in those industries, it's great to have a little bit lower of a current ratio, but for the most part, and Apple included, you kind of want to see their current ratio at about 1.0. So with that said, well, um, a good thing is, is that or Apple ended 2019 with a current ratio of 1.54. That means they had one and a half times current assets as compared to current liabilities. That is almost a waste of current assets. Move some of that cash, move some of the, the short term investment, you know, kick it out to the investors and dividends or, you know, plow it into the organization for growth on the long term. Uh, but th this shows that they're kind of mismanaging their current assets as compared to current late ratio. Um, current liabilities in 2019. Fortunately, in the next two years, the organization would continually bring down their current ratio ending 2021 at 1.07, which means that they're almost in line. They've got you know a little bit more current assets as compared to current liabilities, which, which is um, which is a good thing because you know they, they should be able to remain solvent um, for the short term. So a good trend is this is a declining trend from 2019 to 2021. The current ratio is coming back to an industry standard um, and a bad trend for the organization is from 2000 um, from 2018 to 2019. Their current ratio more than doubled, which shows that the company, they, they really mismanaged their current assets from my most humble of opinions. All right. So with that said, next. I, I, like I said, I am an author of the Beginner's Guide to Apple Incorporated Financial Analysis, as well as Apple's Financial Report. And so if you do like the uh, brief analysis I give you, you can go ahead and go to my website, which is qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Apple Company Analysis. And on my webpage, you can go ahead and pick up the Beginner's Guide, which will provide you with a summarized income statement, balance sheet, and calculated ratios for Apple for the last five years. It will not have my analysis in there, the line item analysis for each um, income statement, balance sheet, and ratio. However, if you do want to go ahead and pick up my Apple Company report, I do provide you all with an analysis of most of the line items in the income statement, the balance sheet, and an analysis of several different financial ratios. Again, all of those ratios are calculated. So if you want to pick up an in-depth report, zip over to my website and check it out. And then finally, in summary, uh, when you are uh, when you're all going through my reports, if you do pick up a report, whether it be the beginner's guide or the financial report for Apple, um, check out the formulas. I do include them in both in both documents and make sure they're in line with whether it be your professor or uh, your organization's uh, standard for you know calculating the financial ratios. A lot of different ways to cal calculate financial ratios. So just make sure the ones that I'm including in my report are aligned with your requirements. Um, next, also remember that beauty is in the eye of the beholder when you're doing your financial analysis. Just because I say something looks good, for example, if an organization is decreasing their debt, I like that, some people don't. And finally, if you're looking good for a guide or a financial report, uh, check out my website right here. And as always, um, that's it. Have a great day. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thank you.